Typical bar rules can vary a lot from bar to bar and person to person, but I will present what is considered the most widely accepted version. I will also show common variations and demonstrate shots that are considered dirty pool. On the resource page linked in the video description, I document and demonstrate the WPA official rules of pool, list all league rule differences, and summarize bar rules. Included is a link to a document covering all bar rules in great detail. There is no official rule set for 8-ball bar rules, but here are the main differences from the official rules of pool. If you pocket one or more balls on the break, the group with the largest number of balls down becomes your group. In other words, it is take what you make. If an equal number of solids and stripes is pocketed, the table remains open. If the 8 is pocketed on the break, you win, unless you also scratch or jump the cue ball off the table, in which case you lose. Every detail must be called on every non-straight-in shot. That applies to combos, kisses, caroms, rail first hits, kicks, and banks. If you don't call the details of the shot, you lose your turn and the cue ball remains where it is. If you scratch, or if the cue ball leaves the table on any shot, including the break, the opponent gets ball in hand in the kitchen, behind the head string, and the cue ball must be shot out of the kitchen before contacting a ball or cushion. If the only object ball is in the kitchen, you need to kick at it. You can also use a masse shot, assuming the cue ball first leaves the kitchen before hitting a cushion or ball. If you don't hit one of your balls first, you lose your turn and the opponent shoots from where the cue ball lies. Other fouls under official rules are not called or penalized. They include not dropping a ball to a cushion, a double hit, a push shot, a scoop jump, and an intentional miscue. The 8 ball cannot be used in a combination or with a kiss shot. When shooting the 8, a scratch results in loss of game, whether or not you pocket the 8. The same applies to jumping the cue ball off the table. Defensive play safeties are considered dirty pool. They should not be played unless they are the result of an honest effort to pocket a ball or break out something when no shot is available. Here, I am making an honest effort to pocket the 9 in the side, so the two-way safety is okay. The complete list of bar rule differences and more detail can be found at the link in the video description. In this section, I summarize and demonstrate some common bar rules variations. In some bars, no jump or masse shots are allowed, since they can damage the cloth if not executed with proper technique and equipment. In some bars, the table is open after the break, regardless of what is pocketed or not. In some bars, scoop jump shots are allowed. In some bars, the balls are racked with the outside balls alternating, resulting in solids on all three corners, creating a big advantage to pocket one or more solids. In some bars, in the kitchen means the front of the cue ball must be behind the head string, in which case the entire cue ball must pass the head string before contacting a ball or cushion. In some bars, the eight ball can be used in a combination, or a kiss shot. In some bars, opponent balls cannot be used in a combo or a kiss shot. In some bars, fouls are called, resulting in loss of turn. They include double hits, pushes, and scoops. In some bars, safety play is not considered dirty pool. In some bars, incidental cushion contact on the way to the pocket needs to be called. And sometimes this applies even with a kick shot or a hit on a pocket hanger. In some bars, pocketed balls spot when you scratch, unless playing on a coin-operated bar box. Again, bar rules can vary a lot depending on who you talk to. And sometimes the rules can seemingly change even during a game, usually to the benefit of your unscrupulous opponent. 
As a general rule, always ask first, ideally before playing, to find out what is allowed and what isn't. Better yet, try to convince people to instead play under the official rules of pool, so there is no question about what is allowed or not, and since the official rules are well documented and clear, and don't penalize smart play. Under typical bar rules, there is a potential to play shots that are considered dirty pool. Even though these shots are not officially illegal under bar rules, they should be avoided to reduce the chances for arguments and potential bodily harm. Here are some examples. It is dirty pool to dink the cue ball with no attempt to pocket a ball, leaving your opponent tough. It is dirty pool to purposely miss an easy shot to get a breakout and leave your opponent bad. You can try to sell the miss, but a knowledgeable opponent might be wise to this. Damn, how could I miss that? Well, I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> it is dirty pool to miss a shot on purpose, like this nine called in the corner, to achieve a breakout with a purposeful scratch, forcing my opponent to shoot from the kitchen. Although, if you can sell this missed shot to your opponent, he might not feel slighted needing to kick at his only ball in the kitchen. Damn! How could I miss that end scratch? Well, I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Although, my opponent totally missed the one and left me tough on the remaining stripes. Maybe my opponent is smarter at bar rules than I think. It is dirty pool to hit an opponent ball first to tie up balls. Again, my opponent shows his smarts by attempting to pocket the one in the upper corner while leaving me with only a bank on the eight. I reply with another dirty pool shot, calling the bank but hitting it too easy by mistake, attempting to hide the cue ball behind the eight. Unfortunately, I left my opponent a look at the one. If you're going to play dirty pool, you should at least be effective. But even worse, my opponent will probably be really pissed at me by this point. I'll be lucky to not get a thumb broke or a punch in the face. It is also dirty pool to play an intentional scoop jump, an intentional miscue herd shot, an intentional double hit follow shot, a push shot, or an intentional hit on the last opponent ball, sending it into the kitchen with a scratch. But my opponent is smart again and calls the one, but uses slow enough speed to guarantee a tough look at the eight for me. Was that dirty pool also, or just smart play? This type of shot is effective only in bar rules. Under the official rules of pool, I would get ball in hand for a straight shot on the eight, since nothing was driven to a cushion after ball contact. It is also dirty pool to obviously send the lone eight to a bad spot without making an honest attempt to pocket the ball, even though I called the bank into the side here. This leaves my opponent with a tough shot. Well, I got lucky. <laughs> it is really dirty pool to move a problem ball with your hand or the cue during a shot. In slow motion, you can clearly see that I broke out the cluster by accident. It is also really dirty pool to intentionally hit an object ball with the Q-tip to pocket an impossible shot, even though I call the carom off the 11 to pocket the 13. Did you see my dirty follow-through? Fortunately for my opponent, I also pocketed the 8 by accident to lose the game. I deserve that for trying to play dirty pool. Sometimes the pool gods are watching and penalize dirty play. Again, if you don't want to get a thumb broke, it is probably best to not attempt these types of shots under bar rules, unless you are playing somebody who tries them on you first. Then go for it, unless the other guy is bigger, stronger, and meaner. I hope you enjoyed my overview of bar rules and dirty pool shots. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.